Okay, so we have about 80 folks on. Um, others, I'm sure, will join shortly. Um, so we can go ahead and pull up, I think, the presentation. And and I'm going to turn it to uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Tara Prupas. Tara, would you like to get us started? There we go. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, super excited that we're all on um, this virtual public engagement together. And that's it. All right, Susan, all you. Okay, Susan, I'm actually going to give uh, it up. <laughs> actually, I probably need to sh have the sharing right so I can run it from my machine. Eric, do you mind if I uh, just, just uh, I can, I'll follow along with you if you don't mind. Um, I well, have it up on my computer. Well, um, you'll have to switch over then um, when you get to the, um, the planning slides. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay running it. Um, just you know, tell me. No, no, you're going to have to switch. You're going to have to switch because I, you're not. We're running different versions, so you have. To, this is not coordinated, so I prefer to run it from my machine. Okay. Okay. Right. That's okay with you. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share. Sorry about that coordination issue. So just let me know when I can um, run it. Um, do the screen share. All right. Um, bear with me, Eric. Okay. Everybody can see that, uh, the agenda? Yep. Okay. So Tara, I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're introducing. Ooh. Oh, you're all set. You're all set to go. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so so um, uh, thank you all for, for gathering here. Sorry for this little, we've got lots of different files and lots of different, um, I'm not, you know, lots of different um, registrations. I'm not Susan, they're not two of you. You're not seeing double, sorry. Somehow I registered under, <clears throat> I must have your Zoom password or something like that. Uh, but I'm Eric, Eric Fang, uh, Perkins Eastman, and uh, we're so happy to be here. We, we haven't talked to you for a while since before um, the new year and what a new year it's been. Um, but we, we've been uh, hard at work um, Mostly, you know, the, the hard, the most important thing that we've been doing is we've been talking to a lot of people. We've been um, uh, listening, and um, we think that that's really helped us in the planning process. And um, we've developed um, uh, different options, and um, not only planning options, but some recommendations on, um, you know, and some thought into how to implement as well. And so, um, what we're going to cover today is uh, where where we are, what we've heard in that period, um, the options. Um, then we're going to have small group breakout sessions and then um, a report back uh, because we have, I don't know, almost 100 people, 200 people registered. So we're expecting more to come in. So we're going to split up and um, each of the uh, committee members is going to be paired with um, one of us. Um, and then we'll talk about sort of the next steps. But we're, we're kind of rounding third base here, or maybe um, sliding into third baseball metaphor, and um, we're, we're heading to um, uh, resolution of the plan. So we're really excited about this. And with us today is the steering committee and everybody, each of the steering committee members will be in a uh, subcommittee to help facilitate and report. Um, does anybody, does everybody want to introduce themselves or in case everybody doesn't know? Or do they need no introduction? Okay. Um, and then this is our team uh, who, who we've seen before. Um, 
So I'm here with Susan, uh, Noah, Sung Hong Yoon, Frank Zimmerman, and Sylvia. Um, so we're, we're the planning team, the planning and design team, and we'll be also in the, in the breakout groups as well. So I'm going to start from, because every time I think we should just get back to the, the, um, the township's goals. Um, so I'll just read these out, just so everybody keeps these in mind, you know, as we're looking at the different options and planning proposals. Um, the first was to encourage appropriate land uses that promote the character of the township as a small suburb of the highest quality. So it's about land uses and making sure that we're promoting the character, the high quality standards that the township has. Um, efficient streets and sidewalks and safe connections to transit for pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. And the third is to recognize and encourage township organizations and activities that strengthen business and social networks. The fourth was maintain and enhance the economic vitality of the downtown and other business districts. The fifth was recognize and encourage the preservation of areas, structures, and sites of historic interest. And the sixth was develop and implement strategies to address townwide sustainability and resiliency. Okay. So um, this is a slide we had up at the last um, the last meeting, just to kind of parse out everybody's role here. Susan, do you want to want to touch on this briefly? Sure. We uh, we think it's important to think about uh, you know why this is a township led effort and what the township's role is. Uh, you know, only only the governing body, the elected officials, can help develop a vision uh, for the downtown. Um, and that involves bringing the community together, starting conversation, thinking about what the overall will be um, in terms of the development concepts, um, you know, general height, bulk, and scale of development. And then once all those things have been established, it's up to the township to establish the implementation of, of those recommendations. So the regulatory framework, the zoning, uh, the requirements governing development, um, improvements to the public realm, uh, capital improvements, and then marketing and branding to be done in, in conjunction with the CID, but uh, largely needs to be led by the township. So it, it's important to think about what the township is responsible for and what, what they're not responsible for. Getting some feedback, so I'm gonna mute. Okay, so, so uh, here we are in the process. <clears throat> um, we uh, finished the options. We took we took a little pause right at the beginning of this blue phase, which is the options. Last time we talked to you, we had kind of a, a general um, set of principles that we vetted with you all. Uh, that was before the holidays, and um, we you know we had an interactive survey, which we'll talk about a little bit. <clears throat> we have another survey up running today, uh, th you know, this week, and the workshop is today. And from what we find today, uh, we will be um, kind of coalescing that into a preferred plan. Um, and um, then we'll wrap that up and we'll document it into a report. Um, this 23 week original process, I think is stretched on because we felt that it was really important to take this time to um, do the listening. And um, also in addition, we did some, um, some numbers crunching. We have with us, uh, in addition to the six members of our planning team, uh, is uh, Maser um, Engineering, who had uh, actually done some traffic modeling and some traffic proposals that uh, we had included in the plan. And we wanted to make sure that he was here to walk you through that, to make sure that you knew that we had done our due diligence and how some of the uh, recommendations play out. So um, let's talk about um, where we are with uh, the listening process and, and the engagement. Sure, and uh, I'll just speak for a few moments about you know how you can get involved. I think many of you who are here tonight have been involved in the process so far, um, and you probably are already familiar with the project website. But if you're not, um, go take a look. Uh, there's lots of information, uh, plenty of announcements about what's been going on, um, summaries of the workshops, deliverables for the project. So there's there's lots of information here. And Eric, next slide. So what's on the website right now, uh, which I'm hoping that many of you have already looked at, um, but if you haven't, go take a look. Um, there is an interactive map, which is going to summarize all the all the draft recommendations that we're talking about tonight. Um, and you can you can give comments, you can explore, and you can see what your neighbors are saying. Um, and then on the next slide, we'll we'll show you a little bit more how to do that. So this 
basically they're, they're organized by topic uh, on, on the far left, you'll see, once you, once you go to the website, um, you can, you can you know, browse the different topics. You can click the comment anywhere on the map, you drag it, um, and you can click throughout the map and find more information about any of the, any of the various draft recommendations. So even if you've already looked at this, um, if you, if you learn more tonight and you feel like you, you have more to say, there's no limit. Um, so please do uh, take the opportunity to go check this out. Okay. And I think um, one thing we're trying to do with this presentation tonight is to have some real time polls. So hopefully it works, um, but we do have a poll question and I think we'll, we'll take a pause to be able to pull that up. So hopefully that popped up for everybody and you were able to take that. Noah, are you able to share results or is that Christine? There's nothing on the screen, oh, there it is. Ah, there you go. Oh, whoa, good. Okay, so I guess the good news, is there seems to be some awareness of the survey. It looks like about 60% of you all are at least aware of it uh, and a good chunk of you have already looked at it. So those of you who are here for the first time, um, do take a few moments and go check it out and, and let comments. Thanks for that. Um, and we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. So I, I did see some familiar faces. I know some of you were at the first workshop and may have participated in the first uh, survey. We have another quick poll question. So we kind of get a read of who's in the room and who's participated so far. So stay tuned for another poll question, very quick. Responses should be up in a second. So about 50-50 uh, actually. This is helpful for us because we do, uh, we, we are gonna have a little bit of recap uh, about what we heard at the first workshop for those of you who weren't able to attend. So it's helpful to get a sense of, of you know, who's participated so far. So at that first workshop, we had about 150 people. Um, and we also had the first um, interactive, interactive web poll. Um, and we got about 160 comments on that. 135 survey responses. So very good participation so far. And on the next slide, I'm gonna start summarizing quickly uh, a little bit of what we've heard both in that first workshop and the first online survey. So we asked in the survey, um, and, and if everyone is not speaking, you can mute. I'm getting some feedback. I think Eric, that includes you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, that's much better. In that first workshop uh, and online survey, you know, we asked why people typically come downtown. You know, what are, what's the purpose of their trip? And really the overwhelming response, number one is dining. Um, and then uh, number two is shopping at local businesses. Also the library and Taylor Park are big attractions that bring people downtown. Um, we asked uh, about how often people come. And the good news is that you have about a third of the survey responses come at least several times a week. So you have a very, um, very active participation in, in downtown, lots of visitors uh, in the downtown. Very few people said that they uh, almost never go downtown, which is, is good. I hope folks who take a survey about the downtown actually actually come downtown, so that's good. Um, and we wanted to get a sense of how people's uh, visitation may have changed during COVID. So we asked, you know, do people spend more time now than they did uh, pre-COVID? It's interesting, about half um, are not spending any more time than before, but since you already have a fair number of people who are coming downtown, um, you, you're already working from a pretty high level. And, but you did have about 20% um, who were saying, uh, yes, I am coming downtown more. So it's, it's kind of a, a nice opportunity that folks are almost rediscovering downtown and, and really taking advantage of, of the, this great asset that Milburn has. We asked how people get downtown um, and whether they walk or bike. And I would say just over a third uh, never walk or bike. So that's, that, that's an opportunity uh, to help capture some people uh, who might not be be walking or biking and, and could be induced perhaps with better options. 
Um, but you do have a fair number of people who, who are at least sometimes are walking or biking. So that's, that speaks well for your accessibility of the downtown. Next slide. Okay, so we asked people what the top priorities are. We wanted to get a sense of what people really care about um, when we think about uh, potential changes to the downtown. Uh, if you go back quick. Um, and overwhelmingly, uh, people were really interested in more restaurants, more, more shopping options, uh, diversity of options. And I think hand in hand with that is uh, the idea of economic development, attracting new businesses, um, which makes, makes a lot of sense. We also saw uh, a pretty heavy response on things like walkability, um, improving um, you know, parking options, uh, making it more, more clear where people can park, and then culture and entertainment um, were rated fairly highly as well. So on the next slide, um, as Eric mentioned, we have been when uh, meeting with folks virtually. Uh, we've been listening, doing a lot of listening. We've been having uh, some calls with major property owners downtown to get a sense of what you know what they're seeing uh, in things like attracting tenants. Um, we did meet with the Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board, representatives of the Historic Society, um, had a meeting with Essex County DOT uh, to talk about options. Um, neighborhood associations uh, had a second meeting with the Paper Mill Playhouse. Uh, a couple of meetings with the township planner, and then also, as Eric mentioned, with the traffic consult township's traffic consultant uh, on the modeling of, of potential options. So we heard a lot, we've learned a lot, and this is just a little quick summary of, of some of what we heard. And, and speaking to particularly the property and the business owners, we heard that there, there is a very clear perception that, that we heard from multiple people uh, that there's a perception that's very difficult uh, to open a business in Milburn. It's difficult to go through the approvals process, um, the word on the street is it takes forever. Uh, it's expensive. It's not an easy process. Um, so that's a that's a concern. Um, and we've heard that you have some existing storefront vacancies, and when you combine that with you know some confusion and concern about traffic and parking, um, it's not a great environment to attract tenants. It's, it's tough. It's tough these days to to get tenants uh, into the town. Um, and perhaps as a result of that, um, your rents do appear to be lagging. At least some of your peers, uh, certainly Summit. Um, and it appears that you may be at risk of losing some of the competitive position uh, with, with your neighbors, uh, your neighborhood peers, you, you, the towns all around you. So that's something that's, uh, that's important to think about. And I think it's, it's really um, driven some of our recommendations, which I think you'll start to see on the next slide uh, when we think about um, planning principles. So I think we, we touched on some of these at the first workshop. So those of you who were here before, um, some of this may be familiar. But as a result of all the meetings that we've had and what we've heard, we did add this first principle, which is really speaking to creating a welcoming environment um, for both new businesses and also the existing ones, to a supportive environment um, to help these businesses come, come into town and also continue to thrive. And a lot of that is really about messaging, which we'll, we'll talk about in a few moments. Um, some of these other principles have, have sort of held steady throughout the process. Um, really the concept of focusing uh, in your downtown core, that that should be the area of focus for retail and food and beverage as, uh, as some of your key attractions. Um, and then throughout the downtown, working hard to, uh, to increase patronage and, and economic activity by improving connect connections in and around the downtown and to the downtown, um, encouraging some development you know, next to the core, streamlining parking. Um, we'll talk about uh, traffic options for Milburn Avenue and Essex Street and how there's the potential to return those to two-way traffic. Um, and then a lot about the public realm, streetscape, uh, utility lines, uh, adding street trees, filling in those gaps uh, in, in the street wall. And then lastly, you know, focusing where there is potential for new development, focusing that on Essex Street as, as the, the primary corridor for new development. And we'll talk about all these. We're going to kind of go through the draft recommendations according to these principles. So I'm going to get started with the, um, the first one about the business environment, talk a little bit about the downtown core, and then I'm going to pass it to Eric. So as I said, we, we added this principle um, really based on a lot of what we heard from, from talking to folks. Um, and it's, it's really a lot about messaging and getting, getting the word out that you are open for business, you are a place that it's a great place to come and, and open a business. And some ideas here, um, we looked a lot, of, a lot of what your peers are doing, creating an online welcome packet um, to, to help show prospective businesses what, you know, what needs to happen, uh, what the approvals process is like, um, how you go about opening a business, who to talk to. Pretty much all of your neighbors are doing this. Um, I would say with the exception of Chatham and they're the only one of your neighbors that doesn't have a SID. So I think that's probably a big part of that. Um, but you know, all, all the towns around you are doing this already. Um, and so we think that there's a good partnership opportunity here with the SID 
to both welcome new businesses and also continue to celebrate the successes of existing business to, to keep them thriving. And then when you do have changes to the regulatory environment, including some that have already been made, um, we think that there's an opportunity to ed educate uh, the public as well as business owners to, to help them know what's changed. Uh, and in many cases, how it's actually gotten easier um, to, you know, to navigate this approvals process. So it's really about getting that word out. And on the next slide, I think you'll see um, just some examples um, of, of what some of your you know, peer communities are doing. You know, here you see South Orange, um, really nice website, you know, why you should come and open a business in South Orange. Um, the other image here is from Chatham, and it's, it's an initiative that um, they've been doing during COVID, you know, celebrating uh, existing businesses, trying to support, um, you know, where businesses are doing promotions or whether they're, where they're celebrating a milestone, you know, 10 years in business, that type of thing. Um, really just creating a social media, um, you know, network and, and celebrating that. On the next slide, uh, I think we'll talk about some more recommendations. Um, so again, with messaging, this is the Township's Informal Technical Review Committee. It's, it's a fairly new committee, which is actually a nice service to allow people who are interested in making an, an improvement in their building uh, downtown or opening a business to come in and talk informally with Township staff about the process, kind of vet some of the ideas, talk about um, you know, concerns and, and kind of iron those out. Um, it's a good service, but the way that it's being presented, it sounds a little bit like it, it's another committee you have to get an approval from. So we've already talked with the township and I think that they're, they're working on um, really just kind of rebranding this and, and making sure that you're communicating um, that this is, it is a service and, and it's a good thing um, and, and it should be opened up uh, so that more people take advantage of it. And then again, part of branding, um, you know, there, there is this sort of signage aspect, which we think is an opportunity, but there's a the basic branding that um, if you want to get the word out that Milburn is open for business, that needs to be part and parcel of, of your downtown branding um, and that's the strategy that you're, you're undertaking. So we like this example from Suffolk. Um, we're open. We're open for business. Come visit. It really just gets the word out. Um, and so it's it, the first step is developing that strategy. And then the second step is implementing it through, through placemaking and, and signage throughout the downtown that's attractive and, and gets the message out. Okay. Eric, I think you're on mute. Just as a reminder, in previous meetings, we talked about the downtown almost, you know, it's competing with other. Um, other downtowns in the region as an entity, right? Not just the individual shops and restaurants and so forth. It's, it's competing with short hills. It's competing with malls. It's competing with um, other business centers. So it's it's got to have a an identity unto itself, a brand, if you will. And um, you know that's you know the, the the signage and the graphics come after that. But it's sort of like what does downtown Melbourne want to communicate that it's about? So when people go down there, they're getting. Yeah. And then I think the last part of this, uh, this principle is really, you know, we, we've taken a quick look and we think there, there's a little bit more to do, but uh, a quick look at some of your other regulations regarding signage and fees. We think that there's opportunity to, to streamline those a little bit, um, you know, re reduce the barrier of entry a little bit, uh, make it more, more clear for folks who are interested in opening up a business or, or changing out a, a sign, things like that. Um, really just, you know, removing barriers um, to investment. Okay. okay, we decided to really lead from um, the streamlining, streamlining and the regulatory uh, because we thought that that was really the, the, the important first step, um, you know, that, that to really kind of send the signal that the downtown um, is open for business, it's a business friendly environment. It's the regs are, there's no regs that should be, um, uh, you know, becoming an obstacle to opening a business or conducting business or growing your business. And that signal is very important. And we feel that that was the first thing to start with. And then all of the other, um, you know, physical recommendations that we could be contemplating as well. So I'm going to, we'll talk a little bit about this um, uh, notion of the core, which Susan. Uh, have brought up, which you know, introduced this at the last meeting, and really kind of um, identified the downtown as kind of three parts. Usually, think about it as east of uh, Main Street, west of Main Street, 
Um, we actually think that there's a core area that's Maine, Maine and Milburn, right? Essex and uh, the, you know, the park. And um, between really Dunkin' Donuts, not even Town Hall, but Dunkin' Donuts and Lackawanna, that's the core area. That's where uh, I've got the most consistent scale, the most consistent character and quality, uh, pedestrian environment and so forth. And, and the rest beyond that, going out to Douglas and over to Essex, Andy says, um, that's downtown too, but it, they're, they're, they're kind of uh, complementary. Um, those sides have less consistent quality and scale and so forth, but they all need to relate and work together. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what that means. Um, you want me so, to cover this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why don't, yeah. This is, you know, if you're thinking about supporting the downtown core, you know, one of the first things that we looked at is what is the zoning, you know, what is the zoning telling you should do? And, and so we, you know, we have some recommendations here about, um, you know, really promoting active ground floor uses. Um, so thinking about, um, you know, business types that may be technically offices, but they also generate a, a customer, a, you know, customer activity like real estate offices, uh, medical clinics, um, you know, insurance. Okay. Um, and then we heard pretty much overwhelmingly support for outdoor dining. I think people generally really liked uh, the closure of Main Street. They wanted to continue in some fashion. Um, and so looking at making that permanent, both from a physical standpoint and then looking at the regulations that promote outdoor dining. Um, certainly on Main Street, but there, there are probably other opportunities as well. And then looking at expanding your, your permitted uses downtown, particularly in the core, um, you know, making it easier uh, to open restaurants and bars, uh, obviously still balancing the, the impacts on, on the residential neighborhoods. Um, breweries, brew pubs, and distilleries um, are, are something that we're seeing a lot of demand for. Um, theaters and museums, you have them already. Um, they're not technically permitted, so let's permit them. Um, indoor commercial recreation and co-working space. These are all things that, that generate feet on the ground which is exactly what you need uh, in a downtown. You need daytime population to support uh, businesses. And then the last one is something that we're seeing more and more of um, really throughout the region, um, looking at flexibility on what's happening in the space. So allowing you know, more than one permitted use to happen. Maybe you have a, a shop that also has a small cafe in it, or you have uh, a shop that offers classes at night, or you wanna have a food hall uh, in a larger space. So really just making sure that those types of things would be allowable. Okay, on the next slide, um, I think we have a, another poll. So we're gonna take a pause. We've, we've told you a lot already. We're gonna take a pause for a quick poll. But actually, uh, I'm gonna do some explaining here. When we talk about the shoulder areas, we mean outside the core. Um, and we're thinking of, in those areas, thinking about residential and office uses, uh, a little bit on the ground floor. Uh, so promoting uh, where you're gonna have res residential, it would be in those sort of shoulder areas. So let us know. Uh, what you think of that idea. Okay. Okay, so just over half would support some, some kind of mixed use type development uh, in those, those sort of uh, periphery areas. Um, some folks weren't sure. Um, some folks wanted to see it only if it were senior housing and, and then um, you know about 12% uh, do, would not support that. So a little bit more on, on that recommendation, you know, what we what we are literally looking at is in those areas of yellow, that's what we, we consider the quote unquote shoulder areas. Um, and right now in your downtown residential uses are not allowed on the ground floor, nor, nor are most offices. And so that would be where we would focus those types of uses. And then on the DPW site, which is that area in green, which is a real opportunity site, um, thinking about a little bit of a mi different mix of uses. So, um, you know, potentially residential, potentially some commercial, but also potentially um, you know, some type of very, very lighted, like kind of industrial maker space. So um, artisan manufacturing, um, you know, stuff that, that really brings people downtown and is, is a unique, interesting draw. We think that site might lend itself to something like that. 
Okay. And, and we'll, you'll have opportunity to talk more about these in the breakout groups as well. So on the next slide, we'll keep going. And this one's all about parking. So parking is, is something that we, we've heard a lot about. We hear about in every downtown study we do. Uh, it's something that's very near and dear to folks, folks' hearts. Um, so one of the recommendations here is really just a recognition that um, most of the existing buildings downtown um, do not have off-street parking. Some do, uh, but most don't, and that is not going to change. So when you have a use that comes into a building that doesn't have parking, um, do we really even need to require that? parking. We know they can't provide it. We know they're going to need to get a variance. Do they really need to go through all that, uh, that effort, that expense, um, which really is kind of a barrier of entry. And so it's a recommendation to eliminate uh, that required off-street parking for the non-residential uses, ground four. Um, if, if someone is putting in new development that includes residential, then clearly that should, that should in include parking, off-street parking. And then also looking at opportunities for, uh, for more efficient use of parking. So sharing uh, parking between uses that have different peak periods. Um, you know, offices have a maximum demand during the, during the day, uh, during the week. Um, restaurants tend to be at nighttime and on the weekends. So it's kind of a nice, uh, you know, nice balance there. Um, and we do think that there's a lot that needs to be done on the management side. So both the enforcement and then the, also the management of permit parking, making sure that um, employees of stores and businesses downtown are have places to park, but that they're not the places that are um, that are really in high demand from customers. So making sure that you're you're managing that um, those different parking needs accordingly. Um, hours of permits, you know, making sure that if you want to come downtown um, after COVID is over and and see a play uh, and have dinner, you're not worried about whether you you know you paid the meter long enough. Um, and, and then there's a lot of it is, is really about publicizing the parking. So making sure that your online maps are clear, that they tell, tell people how many spaces are available, um, really where they should be looking for parking so that when, you're, when you come downtown as a visitor, you're not, you're not lost, you're not searching around for parking. Okay. And then I think the last thing on, on parking is, um, we, we see this in Melbourne and we see it in, in many similar towns where you have kind of the behind the buildings there is parking, it's a little bit um, chopped up. There's different ownership. Uh, we think that there's probably an opportunity to rationalize some of this, um, perhaps through the redevelopment process, um, you know, creating more efficiencies back here in places like, like behind these buildings on, on Main Street, um, and even potentially opening up some of these areas for open space, which is a, a really nice opportunity. Okay, and so I'm gonna turn it back to Eric um, because he's going to start going through a little bit about the connections and also some of the, um, the new downtown concepts. And you're on mute, Eric. Okay, so we, we've talked a lot about in the previous meetings, uh, all the, the great calling anchors that the downtown has that most downtowns don't have. Um, you guys are really unique. You have the train station. You have uh, a beautiful, well-known um, regional theater. You have a 2,000-acre uh, park. And then another lovely downtown park, um, a movie theater, and, and so forth. Um, you even have your own river, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, you know, the real question really is how to connect this all and how to take advantage of all those people who are coming downtown anyway to all of those different anchors to get them to come and frequent the, the cafes, the shops, the, the restaurants, and so forth. Um, so, you know, to make everything kind of just mesh a little bit better. So we call those the destination drivers, right? Because they're destination, destinations and they drive traffic. Uh, so we want to catch as many of those as possible. And it's just literally connecting the dots. So the first one, an obvious one, is Taylor Park. You know, you have this lovely um, park downtown. It's really a jewel. It's a hidden gem. Uh, and uh, it's, it's hidden really behind this screen of, uh, you know, the, the fence and then green and it, you almost wouldn't know there. It's kind of nice. It's like this uh, hidden oasis, but on the other hand, it doesn't uh, necessarily reinforce uh, Milburn Ave in the downtown scene. Um, you, first of all, it's a, over 130 feet that you have to walk past and uh, at night it's kind of dark. It's, it's a little bit dead. Um, it's also something that a lot of people go to and you want them to come back and enjoy uh, the downtown merchants and so forth. So, um, you know, we, we uh, I think we talked about this a little bit last time about trying to open that up a little bit. Um, 
you know, keep, keeping all the things that are important, right? The, 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 the magnificent, um, you know, old tree that's there. Um, the buildings that are on the sides, they have uh, brick walls. Let's keep them there. Maybe they can open up that, give them an additional opportunity to have, uh, you know, a terrace that overlooks the garden, not in an obtrusive way because it's a pretty big space. Another kiosk that kind of provides some interest as you go along um, Milburn Ave. Um, and then, you know, increase crossings uh, from Lackawanna. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. You'll say, well, I, I don't, I didn't notice any trees or, um, or bikes, um, but that's something that we think that also should be introduced into uh, the downtown floor. So. Hey, Eric, <clears throat> um, we, we created a poll question for, uh, for this one. Absolutely. So, um, <clears throat> Oh yeah, so we were just wondering what people think about this idea, um, whether you like it, whether it's meh, or whether it's not worth the effort. Okay, it looks like um, you know most people responded. Looks like um, you know over seventy percent of people um, like the idea. So you know maybe something that we should uh, look into a little more and um, you know um, include as part of our plan. So sorry, Eric. <clears throat> no, not at all. That's good. So you know, one of the things to note: this is all within public property. There's nothing that's requiring um, acquisition or anything like that. So this is remember uh, Susan's uh, little chart. With the four square, or six squares, um, so you know the town has the ability to um, change, upgrade, improve, tweak the public realm, uh, the regulations which she talked about, and and um, the parks and um, streets and so forth. And this is one of them. So um, we, we we note the bike here, and I think that one of the things that we also felt was an, uh, a missed opportunity, in addition to opening up Taylor Park, was connecting Taylor Park to uh, the reservation. Uh, we, we showed this before, it's a less than a three minute walk, 870 feet if you go point to point from the reservation to, to Taylor Park. And um, you know, by and large, I think it's, it's, it's not really uh, well known. You could be at one and not know that the other is so close. Um, the other thing is that when you're in one or the other Taylor Park or the reservation, there's not really a, a a pedestrian facility or or any provisions made for bikes. So if you were to, you know, be riding through Taylor Park, you wanted to continue up, you could theoretically go up maybe three, four miles all the way up to uh, the zoo. Um, however, there's these missing links. So we, we have this picture here of Lackawanna place, and we think that that too can be transformed um, working within the existing right of way, right? So right now we have very narrow sidewalks, uh, blank brick walls, uh, three lanes of traffic. Um, you know, we, we could theoretically include bikes. They could be shared. They could have their own. Uh, we have to study that a little bit more um, and wider sidewalks and you know, hopefully protected. So that way you'd have that link. You could walk from one to the other. And, you know, on a, on a nice day, you could uh, take quite a nice hike or a bike ride and then stop in downtown as you're, um, as you're on the way. The other um, important anchor that we talked about was the Playhouse. And, you know, we noted uh, at our last meeting that the Playhouse brings over 200,000 people um, in every day, or every year. And, um, you know, if we could capture a fraction of those, and you do already, but if we could capture more of those to go to the downtown restaurants before, after, and so forth, um, that would be a great boon for the downtown. Now, right now, the, um, the Playhouse is, is quite close. Same thing as the Reservation and uh, Taylor Park. However, it's the same thing that it doesn't feel close. So how can we make that feel a little bit uh, easier to walk and so forth? So our concentration really was this stretch of Old Shore Hills between uh, the Train Trestle and Essex and how to make that a better walk. Right now, that's um, but most of it's like there's a, it's a nice row of um, sh shops uh, on the northeast corner uh, where the paint store is and the paper mill playhouse just opened up a new facility and so forth. But 
by and large, you're walking past parking and um, kind of empty or seemingly empty lots and so forth. So not, not the most pleasant, but we want to get people to make that walk and make it feel a lot easier. Okay, so um, this is a, a view of that uh, section of um, Main Street. You can recognize this right here. This is the corner of um, the intersection of Essex and Old Short Hills. This is Main Street right here. And, um, you know, there's the, the parking lot. And then this is the corner where the um, uh, farmer's market is held. And, you know, if we start to look at trying to infill some of those gaps, so there'll be more shops or active frontages, something in, of interest to make that walk feel better. Um, a small town, town square um, to formalize that. The, this is just a quick sketch that um, Sung Hwang did to show that it could be an amphitheater. Maybe, maybe uh, the Paper Mill Playhouse could have some uh, performances here, outdoor, um, you know, events or small concerts or something. It just it's really a link to shorten that distance and connect um, the upper part of Old Short Hills Ave to uh, Main Street, okay? And then, you know, again, looking at other opportunities to improve the public realm um, while addressing other issues. Um, we all know about the floods and uh, the river, um, you know, most times it's, when it's low, it's not the prettiest site in the world, it's just something that's kind of there. And uh, we know that um, the township had hired an engineer to do a report to understand what kind of measures could be taken to um, mitigate this. And um, so our, our um, charge really was to make sure that um, that project or to explore possibilities for how that project could be done in a way that also had other benefits. So it wasn't just a flood project, but it could also help enhance the public realm enhance the economic competitiveness and so forth. Uh, this is the, the flood map. In, in these scenes you know quite well, so I don't want to dwell on them, not that pleasant. But you know, could we open that up so we had more contact to, um, to the water? Um, and we had place this, places to sit. So we had also uh, the opportunity to go from the, the parking garage to the core of downtown at, at Maine and Milburn. Right now, I think that, that was another issue that um, we heard a lot about, which is that the parking garage, while it provides a lot of parking, it's a nicely designed facility, it's just a little bit out of sight and off the beaten track. If we open this up and create a, a continuous pathway between Milburn and Essex, uh, that would provide a direct line of sight um, and, you know, a, a direct um, design line that people could walk from the parking garage, see the parking garage, and get to their destination at the heart of downtown. So this, this is a little sketch, another one that Sung Hwang did. Um, it's kind of light, but it's actually, we, we looked at this technically, we understand all the grades and um, the, the boundary lines and so forth. Um, but you know, what if there's an opportunity to get down to the, to the river level and to naturalize the, the, the sides of the river so um, it could attract birds and things like that, just, just like the river is south of uh, Milburn Avenue. So Eric, I think and, we have uh, a poll question. For oh, do you have another poll? Okay, all right. Poll. Yeah, why not ask? So yeah, did we just want to know what you think about this idea. <clears throat> the poll questions are our way to make sure that everyone's staying awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll break it up a little bit. So thanks for bearing with us on the, on the technical uh, fun issues. That's that this is in lieu of uh, people being able to throw, throw spitballs and uh, <laughs> whistle and hiss. Okay, good. So it looks like most of the results are coming in. This, this was even more positive than the, um, than the Taylor Park uh, recommendations. So it looks like overwhelmingly positive. I'm going to keep going. We're now, now we're going to get into the mobility part. So one of the things that we heard a lot about, um, this is from the get-go, but we also started hearing a lot in the last uh, several months that we took this kind of listening break, uh, which was about the traffic. Um, you know, the, the speeds were excessive. People didn't feel safe. And we heard this at the last meeting in December as well. People um, didn't feel comfortable necessarily. 
Um, it was confusing, the, the lack of ability to make certain turns where you wanted to force you to make these big loops and so forth. And, um, and then there's also, you know, bikes all over the place because people didn't have uh, ability to, to ride downtown. So we, we um, uh, came up with a plan to incorporate bikes downtown. And this, this goes hand in hand with kind of a, a, a little bit of broader look at retooling the downtown uh, mobility system. And um, we, we felt that uh, Milburn was a little, you know, there's a lot going on in Milburn. There's a lot of needs, parking, um, side, wider sidewalks, so forth. Um, so we are proposing that Essex Street become the main east-west for people wanting to ride bicycles. Um, that would connect everybody up to the train station. Um, it, would, it would keep everybody in, um, you know, in the downtown without having to be on Milburn Ave. Um, the other thing about this system is we we are trying to connect all three of the schools. We know that this the the, the kids are you know they're they're within a stone's throw, but uh, it, it's 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 easy to get to downtown. But we, let's make it even easier um, for commuters who want to get to the station. This widens the radius beyond that ten minute walk, which is about a half a mile. Um, and then finally, if we can. Uh, make some key connections, like I explained before, in Lackawanna, we can link up to a much bigger, um, you know, almost countywide system, which we think the county would love, and maybe, you know, love enough to give, give the township some money to, to improve some of this. Um, so, um, so, so, so this is the, the, the concept, and this is in within, this is within the context of a broader um, set of recommendations for retooling the downtown traffic. So, um, you know, one of the uh, recommendations really is to try to make it easier so people didn't have to go on some of these circuitous uh, loops. And um, also to uh, try to stem the excessive speeds that people have complained about east of Main Street. So we're proposing to go to a two-way traffic system. And um, not just on Milburn Avenue, but if you go two way on one, you have to go two way on the other. And the idea is not to decrease the amount of traffic that can flow through downtown, but to spread it out. So it's not so concentrated that speeds aren't excessive and people don't have to, um, to make you know, the big loops, but they can get to where they want more directly. Uh, we, want, we also propose easing some of the turning restrictions so again, it's easy to navigate downtown, um, right? I think the first time I went through downtown, I almost missed it because I was shot through uh, on Essex and I didn't know, you know where, the where, where the there was. Um, and so to explain this, and we took a little bit of a, a pause in the month of January, so Maser uh, Engineering could uh, model this because we wanted to make sure that this would work and we wanted to make sure before we came back to you to, to uh, talk about this, that we had done our homework and we had vetted this. Um, so Maurice, um, are you on the line? Can you take people through the, um, your, your uh, findings? I am. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, good to be here virtually. So let me take one minute to give you a historical perspective about what's been happening to our streets. If you go back to the early 1900s, uh, you find that towns and communities owned their streets. And that is reflected in the laws in New Jersey. If you look at Route 27, for example, you will find that it belongs to the city of uh, Elizabeth in Elizabeth. It belongs to the city of New Brunswick in New Brunswick and so on. Then in, in 50 years later in the mid 1900s, there was the reversal of that. And the agencies went to wider streets, one ways, and the idea was to move traffic, increase speed, and improve efficiency. Well, right now we are reversing the reversal. And we want to go back to uh, the way it used to be a long time ago, where downtown areas uh, 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 were consistent from a traffic perspective with the other characteristics of downtown. In terms of the study, we did a very extensive model that included uh, 10 intersections. And to put it to you very uh, uh, briefly, it works. Uh, we met with the county. Uh, the county appeared to be open to the idea. And uh, moving forward, if there is consensus, um, the, uh, the next step would be to submit the study to the county. 
get their approval and move forward um, um, uh, to vet what it takes to make the changes. Thank you, Eric. Well, we actually um, included some of your, your backup if you want. If, if, if folks are, um, I don't know if we can have a quick show of hands, we can't really do that, but if folks are up for a little bit of the technical backup, um, Maurice can, uh, you, I don't know if you want to spend a little time to just explain some of the details. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go over it. Uh, so you're looking here at the two ends of the uh, downtown, downtown area. Um, uh, uh, one end is uh, Park View, the other end is Douglas. These two intersections were analyzed and everything in between. And um, when we analyzed them, we looked at the delay, at the queuing, at all the metrics. And we found that um, actually the uh, delay parameters will not change if you make this into a two-way. As a matter of fact, at some intersections, there was a slight improvement at other intersections, there were a slight uh, degradation. But overall, I would say the system will remain efficient. But the idea here is to um, uh, provide better mobility, uh, lower speed, uh, a better chance for pedestrians to cross and walk because of the lower speed, um, and uh, also just improve the character of downtown from a traffic perspective. And the rest is up to Eric and his team. So I believe, Noah, you have a, a poll here? Yeah, we have a quick poll just to get a sense of, um, you know, how people feel about this idea. You know, it's, it's a new idea. Um, you know, we, we recognize that this obviously, you know, would require further analysis, but is this something that the uh, township should look into? Now, the first question is, you know, first is, I love it. Um, Next one is I'm open to the idea, but skeptical. And then the last one is uh, it's just another change that will disrupt the, uh, the downtown. No, thank you. We understand that you know there there might be a variety of opinions here. Okay. Well. What we see is um, you know about half people uh, like the idea, and, and over 90 percent are are open. So that's that's encouraging, um, and and um, you know leads us to think that maybe it you know uh, requires you know a little further analysis, but um, maybe something we could include. Okay, great, thank you, Maurice. So uh, alongside with uh, changes to the actual. Um, uh, traffic patterns, um, which you know, again, we studied and uh, we made sure the model is um, changes to the streetscape. But now we know that there's been a whole history, you know, with the complete streets and so forth. But um, we we feel that these are you know, pretty well founded um, kind of recommendations, um, and that would really be to um, bury the the uh, utility lines number one and to replace them with street trees. Um, now, there's all sorts of uh, research and study, believe it or not, it seems like a common sense thing, um, but on the impact of uh, street trees on downtown business um, uh, districts, um, you know, and, and part of that is kind of, um, it's, it's associative, you know, there's studies that with places that have street trees, um, they, they do better, but part of it is causal, I mean, it just creates a better environment, there's more shade, um, there's more green, um, it catches the light and so forth. And, um, you know, merchants have been dealing with, uh, have been, you know, thriving, and flourishing in environments with trees. Uh, there's some, there's oftentimes some concern about uh, interference with sign, signage, but, you know, trees can be selected uh, for how high their canopy is and so forth and where the branches start. And they can be pruned as well. Um, so, you know, they are, there is a, a, a strong body of data that associates uh, street trees with uh, higher business incomes, better place perception, higher visual quality. Um, the second thing is that it, there are also studies that show that it actually enhances visual, visual um, excuse me, pedestrian and vehicular safety uh, by reducing speeds, um, decreasing the perception of time and travel, which is almost as important as the actual time and travel and creating safer walking, walking environments by creating kind of a virtual um, uh, barrier between a visual barrier between the pedestrian realm and the uh, 
traffic lanes. And then finally, there's an environmental reason, which has to do with um, the performance of street trees as uh, stormwater management tools. And um, actually, they're probably pound for pound or gallon for gallon, if you will. They're probably one of the most cost-effective things that a, um, you know, a town can do or municipality can do um, to control their stormwater. So the street trees soak up the water, they slow the water down. Um, and then they also reduce the temperature uh, on the sidewalk, in the sidewalk environment, which we know is, is an increasingly um, important issue in most downtowns. So um, that, you know, that would go kind of hand in hand with the traffic, but it doesn't have to, it could be a separate issue. <clears throat> you know, we did some quick little sketches to kind of show what that might, you know, how that might look. Streets like Essex were really, which really have uh, no kind of provisions whatsoever, um, you know, would, would benefit from that definition and um, shade and so forth. And then, um, you know, we, we, we talked about the shoulder areas and, um, you know, how we uh, believe that the shoulder areas should function in terms of um, supporting and complementing the poor. To, to bring more people downtown. So we talked about some measures that we um, came up with to kind of um, connect some of the dots, bring some of the destination drivers, and the people that the destination drivers attract into the downtown. Now, we also are proposing that uh, on a lot of the uh, developable parking lots that there be development um, associated with those as well. And that's particularly on the west side of Main Street and uh, we're proposing that Essex Street really be kind of the, the spine along which that development is organized. So Essex Street, as you can see here, is not the most attractive street. Um, most people right now would say, well, why would I want to develop, you know, uh, you know new, new or invest uh, in, in um, anything along Essex Street? It's not a particularly attractive street. It's all one way. There's lots of asphalt. Um, but, you know, we can, in, the town invests to improve the street, make it a better setting and a better environment for development. Uh, that's one step it can make. And then the second thing, as Susan noted before, the town is convening this community conversation. It's coming up with a, you know, aimed at coming up with a larger vision. And, um, you know, so that, that vision really would involve what, you know, trying to um, illustrate what Essex Street could be. And so we're proposing to really use what's there. Nothing new, no new grand plazas or anything like that. There's a little triangle, if you, if you note, if you're coming in the back way to town hall. Um, but, you know, what if that could be kind of a new, um, you know, really marvelous uh, public space? Um, you could see the DPW if it was um, adaptively, adaptively reused. Here, here we're, we're just so long sketched in a little um, paper mill downtown. It could be a little, you know, uh, downtown experimental theater or something like that. Um, there was talk about a new um, town hall in previous plans. Um, we noticed that there is a basically empty uh, parking and, and lawn in the, on the, the back side of town hall. What if we kept the town, the town hall there, but just extended it? So we didn't have to deal with the disruption of moving it and property acquisition and so forth. And it's kind of in a nice location already. The building that it's in is got a lot of character. Um, it's right next to the donut shop, of course, which is great. But uh, what if we could uh, provide a, a new, more transparent, open, modern, um, technologically more functional uh, facility for the downtown offices? Um, all of a sudden, this could be a great address for new, for, for, for new development. It could be a, another link to the paper mill. Um, and it could provide just a great place for people to gather, I think. Um, if you know, there's um, on, on the side of Town Hall Plaza, there's a, a, a town hall, there is a, a new street. Uh, it's about 10 plus years old called Town Hall Plaza. And um, I always, we always kind of wondered what that's for aside from getting into the parking lots. And um, I, I think I, I personally like uh, smaller blocks. If you go to Europe, uh, the towns that you like to walk around um, they all have very small blocks. And that's because people want to get to that next corner so they can have choices and they can kind of figure out which way to go and meet people coming from different directions. So I, I like, I think the smaller blocks are good. I think you already put the, the street there, but does it have to be so big? 
um, <clears throat> doesn't have to have that much asphalt. So what if we imagine Town Hall Plaza as a shared street? Um, they call a Woodarf, which has no curbs and has cars and pedestrians and bikes together. It could be much narrower. It could maybe be paved in a different material, so it could be a little bit cooler. Um, and again, trees, of course, right? So, um, so that, so th those are the you know some of the main proposals that um, we developed and illustrated, just to give you an idea of how they would feel. Now, uh, we've kind of packaged them into three different options. Now there's nothing magical about the three options. They can be mixed and match, but we wanted to um, we wanted to put them into three discrete options. So you could kind of, uh, rather than have like 60 different permutations, so you could kind of get some sense of how they go together. Um, so the option one would be kind of minimal. We'd keep the traffic patterns as they are, keep Essex Street one way, keep Milburn one way, at least as, um, well, the entirety of, of Milburn Ave, uh, but maybe institute some traffic calming uh, measures. Um, the minimal development, the DPW could stay in place. We are proposing a new um, uh, small parking garage. Nothing as large as the one you know, this, the missile garage is there because it's not needed. Um, and the back end or the middle of the DPW site. Um, and, um, you know, that, that, that would be relatively um, modest set of um, surgical recommendations. And there would be a uh, possible new street we would thread through so people could access that garage because the DPW site is very deep and it's hard to get to into the middle of it. So the garage would be kind of where the, um, the recycling and the dump is right now. It would be hidden from view, but it would be accessible, okay? The second option uh, is a little more extensive. It is, um, proposing that the entirety of the DPW site is um, redeveloped, but the, the, the DPW garage itself is adaptive or reused. I think in previous um, uh, meeting, we had shown all different types of possibilities that uh, could, could occur there. It could be a gym, it could be a, a wonderful food hall, um, a, you know, microbrewery. It's got those, if you go in the DPW, it's got these great arches is uh, great light. Um, you know, again, we in, in Sung Hong sketch, he showed um, paper mill downtown. Um, so there's lots of different possibilities. But, you know, the idea would be to kind of take advantage of that character that's there and uh, kind of give it some new life. Um, this one shows new development on the Annie Says site to um, residential. I wanted to point that out as well. This also incorporates the two-way traffic, the street trees and so forth, and the river walk. All right. Uh, and oh, I'm sorry. And then the um, the, the the kind of uh, shared street uh, conversion of um, uh, town hall plaza. All right. The third option, and 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 they all have numbers associated with it. The numbers can tweak. These are just kind of like what the possibilities are. Um, but this gives you an order of magnitude. I don't want to dwell on those because, again, they're 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 very changeable based on how many floors and so forth. So this gives you a range. Okay. And then the third option would be more extensive still. Um, this would show a redevelopment um, of the DPW site in its tire, entirety, um, showing the garage building um, demolished and then replaced with new, um, new development of some sort. It could be housing, senior housing, um, showing a new town hall next to the fire police. So everything would be consolidated on the west side of Essex. And then new infill development, you know, to fill some of those gaps so you're not walking past all that parking. And Annie says is part of that as well. Um, this one has a little bit more residential, uh, a little bit less uh, retail, a modicum of office and new parking as well. Okay, so um, I think on that note, we can um, break out, right? So I think we need some instructions, Susan, right? <clears throat> Eric, um, just quickly before we do that, I think we just had this one, um, this one slide, which just, we just wanted to test, you know, people's perceptions of some of these options okay. uh, before we go into the breakout groups. But um, um, if we could just run this poll. Um, so this one, you know, we, we know these ideas are, are new for, for most uh, folks, um, but we just want to get a, you know, a quick snap poll just to see if uh, these ideas are interesting to you. 
Um, you know, the first option, as Eric mentioned, is, is kind of the minimal uh, option um, and, and really just kind of focusing um, um, some um, development with parking in the um, in the recycling area. The second one has uh, a little bit more development and the third has uh, the most basically in summary. Um, but this slide here kind of um, pr provides a kind of broad summary of what these uh, concepts are. Oh, it's interesting to see, you know, so far, you know, there's really a mix um, of people um, who are, um, you know, people feel differently about it. Looks like a 30% like option two, 30% like option three, 30% um, are not sure. So, um, you know, these are ideas that I think we're going to, um, you know, develop a little bit more. And, you know, obviously, you know, we want to talk about some of these in our um, breakout groups. So with that, um, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so, so what we're going to do next is um, break out into small group discussions. Um, and we really want to get a sense from everyone, um, you know, what ideas uh, you liked today, you know, what you think um, works, what doesn't work. Um, did we miss anything? Um, we're really at the stage in our um, report where we kind of need to test these ideas to know whether um, they'll fly because ultimately we want this plan to be something that's um, implementable and supported by the public. So we, we need your feedback. Um, but before we um, break out into the small group discussions, we just have one more poll um, just to quickly get a sense um, of, of uh, what your um, not priority or, or what was the best idea that you heard tonight. Um, so we've listed some of them, um, you know, not, not every single idea was listed, but, you know, probably the, you know, the, the, the eight biggest idea, eight or nine biggest ideas. And maybe you could just let us know which, uh, which one spoke to you the most. Noah, can you vote more than once? Uh, I think just once. Top top ideas. It's not. If this isn't a uh, scientific poll, we just want to get a sense for, um, you know, which ideas are the most popular. So it looks like Riverwalk, the Riverwalk concept, um, came out first. Uh, making Milburn open to business came out second, uh, followed followed by two way traffic, and then the Taylor Park idea. So no, I think that's some food for thought for us um, to, to really you know, consider. Um, but with that, we're gonna break into small groups. Um, each group will have a moderator. Um, it'll be either someone from the consultant team or uh, someone from the committee. We'll just be there just to basically um, keep the conversation going, but we, we really wanna hear from you. And so let us know what you think. Um, the moderators will take notes. And after that, uh, we'll, we'll kind of everyone will be pinged back into the larger group and um, you know, one person from each group will kind of summarize what was heard so everyone can hear what happened in each of the groups. So with that, um, I think you should all be um, asked to join a group.
I guess we're first to return. I think we're waiting on everybody to come back and then we'll get started with the report back. Christine, do we have everybody back from the breakout rooms? Yes, everyone's back into the main room now, Susan. Okay, great. Noah, do you want to MC us for the, uh, for the report back? Sure, I guess I could do that. Maybe I'll um, maybe I'll just start with my group. <laughs> um, really, I'll try to do it kind of off the cuff. Um, but we, we had a really great discussion. Everyone kind of talked about some of their ideas and some of their priorities. Um, I took some notes, so I'm just going to read these um, kind of just kind of pull out some key things. Um, but it sounded like um, people were, were very fond of the river walk idea. Uh, a number of people mentioned that that was a good idea. Um, although um, it was brought up that um, the river right now kind of uh, can be a trickle, uh, at least sometimes. And so you'd want to fill that space with, with something green or something attractive. So it's not just kind of a concrete little um, um, kind of a trench down there. So uh, making that an attractive space would be an important part of making that um, an amenity for the township. Um, street trees um, came up on, on a number by a number of participants. Um, just making the township more green and making it a more pleasant place to visit. It's really important, um, kind of low hanging fruit, something that can be done uh, fairly easily. Um, you know, we've heard that, um, you know, parking, you know, is an issue. Um, and particularly the, uh, the flex parking spaces um, along Melbourne Avenue. And that's something that we've heard, we heard at the first public workshop and we've heard also in a number of focus group meetings. So. You know, we are well aware of those issues with those particular parking spaces. So we talked about that. <clears throat> um, we talk about, talked about the importance of um, bringing in new businesses. Um, I think that was the um, thing that was said is um, the thing that needs to happen in the short term. You know, wh when I asked what, what needs to be done right away, um, the answer was bring in new businesses and make it more attractive to businesses. Um, talked about um, parking, um, making more spaces available for curbside pickup and deliveries, um, particularly um, as so many restaurants are, um, have uh, deliveries now and you know, because there's less um, in-person dining. Um, let's see, um, traffic calming was, was uh, important and I think there was um, general um, support for the two-way concept. Um, let's see. Um, I think people also like the ideas of uh, looking behind the buildings as opportunities for um, public uh, space and, and maybe cleaning up the parking there. Um, let's see, uh, when thinking about um, development in the shoulder areas, um, I think most people said that, you know, some, some degree of development would appropriate and it's just a matter of the scale. Um, you know, it should be um, at a moderate scale that's um, keeping in the context of the architectural styles and history um, that really embody uh, Milburn. And, um, but but um, it sounded like a, a mix of residential and retail uh, would be good. And if it was retail, you know, for, for any retail that comes, there should be um, restaurants and other shopping, maybe um, no more um, nail salons. Um, let's see. Um, we heard um, support for wayfinding and signage to help people get around the downtown and notify them about some of the um, attractive gems, um, the park, the playhouse, um, and other things to let people know where they're going. And, um, and then we had an interesting discussion about Main Street. Um, there was a diversity of opinions about the closure and whether it should be done on a seasonal basis. You know, on, on the one hand, it does bring a lot of 
um, people to town and creates some activity, but it also does um, divert a little bit of traffic and may cause um, maybe maybe might divert traffic into other streets. So you know it was a healthy conversation, and um, I think it was really um, instrumental to us to you know develop some of our recommendations. So maybe I'll pass it to uh, Susan uh, to talk about her group. Hey, thank you, Noah. Um, I also took some notes, so I'll try to just capture some of the big ideas. Um, heard some enthusiasm for um, for just some of the overall concepts and kind of the the you know wide ranging concepts that were talked about. Um, lots of support for more trees. Um, lots of support for the Riverwalk and Taylor Park. Um, we did have a conversation about the fact that. You know, Milburn is still a suburb, and um, there's still lots of people who drive, um, particularly people with young families and you know, young children. So we need to make sure that we continue to accommodate vehicles. Um, getting a lot of feedback. I don't know if that's me or if everybody can make sure they're muted. It might be me, so I'll try to be quick. Um, we talked a little bit about residential, and there was some support for residential in theory, and I think. I think folks felt like they could not give a firm opinion, you know, yay or nay on, on any kind of degree of residential because there's just some concern about overall impacts, um, not just in the downtown, but in residential happening elsewhere in Melbourne and, and the feeling that we, we need to have a better picture of, you know, kind of the whole development. Um, so we know what, what it means for the schools and traffic. And um, I think there was, there was some support for the idea in theory, um, but again, some, some potential concerns about, you know, the big picture. Um, Let's see, we talked about the DPW and, you know, the logistics of moving either the, the dump or the, the garage or both. Um, and I think that there was some mixed opinions on that. I think people, some people liked the idea of, of those things not being in the downtown. Um, there were some, some concerns raised about, you know, where's it going to go and the expense of relocating those operations and, and a sense that some people really like having that downtown, um, that it's, it's a service to be able to go and drop off your, you know, your bulk trash. Um, so, you know, not 100% consensus on that. Um, but then we did talk a little bit about, um, you know, what are the priorities in terms of timing, you know, what, what people want to see get done first. And I think the Taylor Park uh, idea came to the forefront of that. People had the sense that, you know, that's kind of a, an easy win, um, something that's very visible, um, could, really, could really show that the town wants to invest uh, in the downtown and make, you know, make it more lively, bring people downtown. There was a feeling that that may be something that's needed um, as we come out of COVID, something that is not a, not a huge big ticket item, but that is very doable. That could you know, make a big, a big impact and help the businesses uh, help to thrive downtown. So um, those, those are the big items. And I'm gonna pass it to Eric to cover your group. I have to unmute myself. Okay, we, we um, had a good collection of um, comments. I promise not to be. I know I said I had a vested interest, so I shouldn't be the spokesperson, but I got that one anyway. Um, I think people were um, generally in favor of um, the traffic changes. There were some, um, uh, you know, questions on some of the impacts on the neighborhoods, and um, I think some expression of need uh, to have further briefings and explanation. Um, Maurice, I'm looking at you. You can't see me on the screen. Uh, of some of the findings. I said we didn't want to, you know, we could have taken up a full hour uh, or more just going through all the numbers and the analysis that you did. And we were satisfied, but uh, I think there is some need to, it does warrant some further explanation, um, you know, in the public forum. Uh, questions about how emergency uh, vehicles would be able to navigate and so forth. Um, with regard to um, the, uh, the, the Riverwalk, um, there was general of enthusiasm for that. There was a uh, comment that there are lar larger um, flood mitigation uh, plans underway. And so that opens up possibilities to be cut to kind of latch on to those larger projects in terms of uh, funding and so forth. Um, um, I think there was uh, other comments about the um, you know, package of uh, enhanced public spaces uh, and the possibilities that opened up for, you know, outdoor merchandising, um, outdoor performances. Um, there was a, uh, some ideas on introducing or opening a co-op for local artists and craftspeople in the downtown, which I think is a terrific idea. Um, and Coral Springs was cited as an example. 
And then um, some history, we, we had a lot of uh, longtime residents. I think the newest resident was like 25 years. So that was the newcomer. Um, one of the long-term residents had remarked kind of on the, the larger traffic context um, and you know how Milburn Avenue has changed over time and how it needs to come back to be a, 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 a road that um, you know, is for the town um, as, as opposed to kind of a regional connector. And correct me if I was wrong on that one, but that was my interpretation of the remarks. Um, and uh, I, think, I think those were kind of the highlights. Oh, and then one very important one, which is the first question I got, which um, I'm, you know, we, we didn't get to, but um, first question I got was, how are we going to pay for all this? So, and I'm deferring to the powers that be on that. You know, we, we are still at the study stage, and we, are, we do have some ideas on that. Uh, today was really getting the, you know, it's part of the due diligence, because the due diligence is not just crunching numbers and doing engineering studies, but it's also learning what will fly and what people's concerns are before we start um, costing things out and so forth, okay? Great, great. I'm, I'm gonna turn to one of our committee members, um, I think Gaston from our committee, you wanna report back from your, your group? Sure, absolutely, uh, we had a great group, uh, a lot of long time residents and pretty much what everybody has been saying so far is what came out of our group as well. The uh, but for the most part, everything that was, or most of the stuff that was said during tonight's presentation, everybody liked. Um, they feel like uh, streamlining the approval process for new businesses or even just getting rid of some of the regulations to make sure we have the new business coming in uh, is very important. Most people like the river walk. Uh, most people uh, like the two-way traffic idea as well. Uh, we need to get a little bit more information though on that how uh, the pedestrians are going to interact with this. Is it going to actually solve the traffic problem for us? Um, uh, yeah, they also uh, liked or wanted that, uh, or like the idea that we're going to revitalize downtown, make it more attractive to everybody to make sure we do keep people coming into downtown. Uh, one person uh, said that, you know, if we get things moving very, very well downtown, pedestrians, biking, uh, cars that once you get the people coming in that it will kind of revitalize the town on its own. Um, uh, most people thought that burying the power lines was good, but they were very skeptical that it was actually worth the cost. Uh, so that would be one thing that they would want to hear back on as to uh, yeah, how much it costs before we're going to do anything about it. Um, things to do first. Uh, we had thought that uh, the streets get the two way traffic going, get the left turns going. Uh, the two easy ones at some signs and uh, we should get the people coming into town um, as far as the redevelopment of uh, the dpw there were mixed feelings uh, some people thought that uh, putting new residences or uh, apartment buildings downtown might be good might not be good um, some say it doesn't belong in town uh, again basically what everybody else has been saying and i think that's about it yep Thanks. trees yeah trees are good so park attract attention to downtown. Great, thank you, Gaston. Mm -hmm. Amy, Amy Lawrence, I see you. So you wanna report back? Sure, happy to. So our group, uh, we also had a very good conversation. Folks in the group ranged from very long-term residents to someone who's been here five months. So lots of different perspectives. I'm not gonna re, you know, we talked about lots of the things that were already said. So I'm just gonna try to focus on uh, maybe a few things that haven't been said yet and assume that the rest of these things like DPW, yes or no, all these kinds of things were also discussed. So one thing that we talked about uh, quite a bit was these bike lanes and the idea of uh, priority, uh, safety for kids walking and people uh, walking to school and people uh, coming, uh, you know, in and out of the area by the train station, that, that pedestrian safety should really be a priority and perhaps over uh, bike lanes. I don't know if they're mutually exclusive, but there was some perhaps perception that they, they were um, and that safety was really um, important. Another point that was made uh, that hasn't been said yet is that um, if we have some sort of outside venue like an amphitheater that we should really think about where that is in terms of uh, sound, uh, both when you're in it and, and how it affects others around you um, let me see, um, there was a lot of, uh, th there was support for the idea of, you know, the points that we have in connectivity, connecting 
you know, Taylor Park up to South Mountain and some of you know, the areas in town that making those connections uh, was important. Um, also, uh, there was, there was uh, the point was made that the idea of, of town hall and creating sort of that extension was a very nice idea and perhaps with the Greenway adjacent to it um, would be, you know, a, a nice addition for downtown and would solve some of those problems that we have. Um, and I think, you know, the point that, so we, we talked a lot about the vacancy and the changing of, you know, zoning and all these things, but another point that came up that I think is important that hasn't been mentioned yet is sort of the beautification of downtown. Simple things that can be done in addition to that, just like cleaning the windows and fixing the awnings and public art in the, you know, in the community and things that make, you know, lighting, things that make the downtown lovely to walk around in. Um, there was, you know, the comments were made that it looks a little shabby. Uh, uh, and, and that seems like something that's, you know, somewhat easily, <laughs> easily fixable. Um, also, there was a comment made about the library sort of being part of this plan, which I, there was a feeling that perhaps it wasn't really mentioned so much in what was presented today. And that uh, the Bauer Center, you know, that the, the town should have a, a real sort of community center, which probably the Bauer Center is intended to be. There was a comment made that there's no parking for the Bauer Center. So like if seniors wanted to come to the Bauer Center, it, it might be challenging for them. So that was interesting. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else. Oh, and then there was, uh, you know, some support for maker spaces and, uh, and destination, Think, you know, things that draw people, like, like the ice skating that we have now, things that are, uh, things that draw people in. Um, I think some of those things were not mentioned, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Yep. Um, Pri, I don't see your face, but I think you're here. Can you report back from your group? Yeah, sure. Okay, there you are. so yeah. Um, so similar to Amy and the others, you know, I, I've heard a lot of the same comments in our group. Um, a lot of support for the Riverwalk. Um, there was a lot of enthusiasm and excitement around what was presented today. Um, there was there were some questions around um, whether or not some some types of businesses would be permitted, um, specifically like outdoor recreation, ski ski rental, ski bike stores, that type of thing, if they would be under the permitted use. Um, there were certainly the same questions around DPW and you know, the pros and cons of locating it somewhere else in terms of um, easy access to trucks um, for snow removal and that type of thing. Um, overall, the Taylor Park proposal was also um, embraced. The two-way Essex Street seemed like folks were in favor of it, but there was some mention of uh, uncertainty as to whether or not it would actually slow traffic. Um, comments about parking and that, yes, we don't perhaps do a great job of telling people where and when parking is available. It's, it's somewhat confusing. So in the presentation, I think there was mention of making that a little bit more user-friendly. Um, there was mention of creating spaces for people with pets or people with dogs because Taylor Park currently does not allow people with dogs to go use that space. So maybe there's an opportunity to create more space for people to go and walk their dog and then go and have a coffee. And Artists creating, I think there was mention of this, creating artist space, music performance spaces, music venues, nothing, you know, crazy large, but something that would obviously match the scale of our town. Um, Home Street was mentioned. Home Street is a, a small north-south street that uh, I think it's it basically it's it's over by the Milburn train station. So there's a question around whether or not or how that street was going to be kind of integrated into this downtown core um, development plan. And over, I think the overarching um, sense was that people really liked what was shared today. In fact, 
they loved some of the concepts. Many seem like common sense that was mentioned by one person, but um, there was concern about how disruptive, you know, some of these really grand visions would be. And, um, you know, like the Riverwalk sounds amazing, but, you know, what's the what's the extent the extent of disruption that it's going to create so that was a concern that was raised and another finally another concern that was raised was the whole kind of upper milburn plan what's happening with upper milburn and how and to what extent would upper milburn be incorporated into this development plan so that was mentioned um i think i think that was it but yes it was it was a great group Lots of lots of great comments and insight. Great. Thank you, Bria. Sylvia, you want, to, want to go next? Sure. Thanks, Susan. Um, so similar uh, to everyone else, uh, the river walk was uh, um, uh, many said it was a very good idea, but they liked uh, many of the ideas. So also like opening up Taylor Park. Uh, and which was also mentioned that it could be an easy thing to do because the township owns already the park. And so the opening up the entrance could be the low hanging fruit um, of, this, of these proposals. Um, converting to two way traffic, there was a bit of a more of a mix, uh, mixed feelings about it. Um, especially some people like it, uh, like it very much. And they also said it's uh, it could be um, a priority because it's easy to do. Uh, but others have uh, some concerns about more people that are gonna move to downtown so that regardless of a two way or one way system that will create traffic. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, one interesting thing that was mentioned is that we are proposing so many um, pedestrian oriented things like the town hall plaza or the river walk. And uh, one person mentioned, why don't we piece all these uh, pedestrian uh, corridors together to kind of have a pedestrian corridor across downtown? And I thought it was, that was a great idea. Um, aesthetics uh, is important. So green in the streets, um, beauty, um, the utility lines, um, and also better signage was mentioned in my group as well. A couple of uh, new ideas that were in included in our presentation. Um, it was mentioned that a permanent ice skating rink, uh, which could, they suggested that either in Taylor Park or it could be an indoor uh, skating rink, which could be a big draw, um, a regional draw also, and, uh, and also an activity that is for everyone and, and in particular for teenagers. Um, the second thing it was that building some systems um, with eaters to expand outdoor uses to a few more months. <laughs> and um, one thing mentioned about um, uh, what should we focus on as a priority is uh, the important thing is don't do things twice. Uh, so coordinating, having a vision is very important uh, in this thing. And the other uh, two more things, one it's uh, getting businesses back, uh, it's priority, and, uh, and safety, um, especially because we have so many schools around downtown. So safety should be all, always priorita prioritized. Um, maybe one more thing. Um, yeah, in terms of a type uh, of development that, that we like to see, um, maybe more office space um, and more variety of uses. And uh, uh, in general, uh, as a priority, making the, the town more appealing for families and more uh, community and family oriented uses. That's Thanks, it. Leah. I think we just have a, maybe one or two more. Um, Frank from Perkins Eastman, are you ready to report back? Yes. Um, so we, uh, we had a wonderful discussion as well. Um, so kind of beginning with things that were included or they didn't like, uh, they sort of, they also wanted to know more about the project costs. Um, and they sort of wanted um, more information, which was provided, we sort of discussed during our meeting about uh, the future location of um, the dump. Um, and um, there was 
a big concern during our discussion about uh, kind of wanting more information on the traffic study, uh, particularly sort of the issues involved in parallel parking and um, two-way traffic. Um, and also sort of concerns about uh, bike lanes fitting within the right of way um, and kind of wanting to know more about the, the processes of um, what we're going through in the future and kind of understanding what, what stage this was in um, getting some of these designs implemented. Um, on the short term, people um, were interested in trees. Um, they thought that adding trees would be great. Um, there was interest in electric car charging stations. Um, and there was uh, interest in um, connecting schools in the plan and with the bike network, but also sort of creating ways um, in which uh, schools could be more connected with downtown. Um, the things, uh, when we talked about whether they should continue to investigate uh, the two-way plan on the streets, uh, there was general um, um, positivity about it with a few people with uh, reservations and um, sort of a, a conflicting view on uh, how two-way traffic or how the current state of one-way traffic has impacted their use of downtown and whether two-way traffic might um, make it a bit easier to get around. Um, and um, there was, in terms of things that they'd uh, like to see in terms of commercial downtown, um, there were sort of concerns about uh, ways that we can target types of businesses that might be able to stay around longer or be able to create scenarios in which businesses could um, stay around longer, particularly in such uh, a taxing time um, that we're in. And um, there, there's just considerable concern about uh, creating systems in which how long it takes to find parking in downtown and making it a little easier to get there. And then just a final note, um, there was uh, hope that we would post um, the slide deck and uh, the traffic report in more detail so people can read through the traffic report and compare that more going forward. That was it. Thanks, Frank. Did we miss anybody? Did anybody yet, not yet report back? I think we hit the groups, all of them. Okay. Well, I am going to turn it back to Eric Fang, if he's ready, um, to talk a little bit about next steps and kind of where we go from here. But I'll just say for myself, thank you all so, so much um, for taking the time tonight. This was, this was fantastic. And please do uh, take the opportunity to go back and check, check out the public survey if you haven't already. Um, Give us your comments, your thoughts, tell your friends and neighbors. Eric, you want to take us home? Well, um, yeah, I, I want to just reiterate, Susan's thank you for um, you know donating your time and your thoughts and your insights, particularly. Um, we are going to take all this, uh, get our put our heads together with the committee and what we've heard. Again, this is the final step in this several month process of really doing intense listening. And um, like I said, it's, it's um, a mix and match of the different elements um, of the different options that we've shown. And um, we will um, be trying to coalesce these to a, um, a single plan and um, accompanied by an implementation um, plan as well. So um, uh, we appreciate all that uh, you've contributed and uh, be on the lookout. We will be kind of presenting that um, or the town will be sharing that with you um, in the next uh, couple of months, month or, month or two. So we're really Getting, getting there. So um, thank you so much and um, have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, good night everyone. Thank you. Good night everybody. Good night, thanks a lot. Good night everybody. Thank you.